Hello and welcome to Vault Life. One of the downsides of Time Safari is that its internal feedback loop is prone to very nasty digital clipping. In this video I'll look at one way to tame that feedback while still giving infinite delay tails and extend the technique to create some unique effects. The obvious thing to do is insert a compressor or limiter in the feedback loop to pull back the feedback volume before it reaches Time Safari's clipping levels. I don't have a compressor so I'll have to patch one myself and as we'll see later, that opens up some interesting possibilities. Take two multiples of the wet output, patch one through a VCA into the feedback input, and the other into an envelope follower. There are plenty of Euro envelope followers, but I'll use the one in my MS-20 Mini. You'll need to invert the output CV, and possibly add some slew to control the smoothness of the envelope, and a CVP is perfect for that. This CV then goes into the VCA to create a DOI compressor. The bottom trace shows the audio output from the VCA, while the top trace shows the CV input to the VCA. In other words, it shows how hard the compression is working. As the feedback grows, the signal definitely distorts, but given the right amplitude settings, the distortion will be analog saturation rather than digital clipping. In this case, the feedback has a dark character. That is often desirable, but you can easily change that character by adding a filter or EQ after the VCA. For added tonal movement, use a VCF modulated by an LFO. Apologies for the hum, my audio interface is playing up at the time. We could also use the envelope follower signal to modulate the cutoff. If the resonance is high, sometimes this can push the feedback very briefly into clipping again, but the filter can give it a nice, chewy, pinged filter type of sound. For another variation, let's use the envelope follower to modulate a VC LFO, which in turn modulates the cutoff. Now let's combine filter modulation with pitch shifting. Occasional gates let short bursts of sound into Time Safari and also send a slightly longer gate high signal to Sound of Thunder's pitch input. This starts the feedback with a pitched up sound but the octave shift only applies to the first couple of repeats. Let's finish with a more complex patch. I use the gate out from the envelope follower to drive a clock divider. One division goes into the tap tempo input of the time safari, causing unpredictable rhythmic glitches and stutters. 
Another clock division goes through branches into Sound of Thunder's pitch input for random octave up effects. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful.